guess we're live. You're live. Um, can everybody hear and see me? We can hear and see you. <laughs> okay, good. Um, welcome everybody to ATEC and uh, thank you for joining our uh, half hour presentation. Um, I'm here uh, with Kelly Lutz, who is the uh, general manager uh, of the company. Good morning. And, uh, I guess I'll uh, welcome again from Smoky, Colorado. And uh, just so that you see, I'm going to, this is what I normally see out of my window um, every morning. But um, today I see presents from our friends in the West Coast. Hopefully you guys are getting some rain in the next couple of days and it'll help that a little bit. But we'll see how that works. Uh, I think what I want to do for this half an hour is very briefly go over six items which uh, or, or topics which we're very much involved with and then more or less open it up for questions. Um, Crystal, is my screen shared? Yeah, we see your flyer there. Okay, good. So um, I'll bring up these uh, these these six items very quickly, and um, and you know, and then basically open it up for questions. Anybody who wants to interrupt while I'm talking, please feel free to do so, uh, either by speaking or by chatting. Uh, of course, um, if anybody wants to have a private discussion after this is over, we're of, of course available for that, either through this um, forum or um, better yet, we can set up our own Zoom program with you later on. Um, so. Um, ATB, uh, Aircraft Technical Company, uh, produces a core curriculum for both FAA uh, and EASA. And um, let me scroll over to this screen. And our, our FAA core curriculum, which we're very proud of, uh, features uh, both the, uh, the 8083 textbooks, but a corrected version of that. And I'll explain that in a moment. And then we also offer matching test guides and matching workbooks. And when I say matching, uh, basically what I mean is, for example, in the general handbook, uh, chapter one of the general handbook relates specifically page by page to the, in the test guide, and chapter two and chapter three in the workbook, in the test guide, and the handbook as well. Uh, in the test guide, all questions are referenced to the specific page uh, that the topic is spoken about. In the handbooks, um, like other test guides, there are questions and answers and explanations. There's the test guides have an oral and practical section. The test guides also offer an online feature where students can go on up for six months as an unlimited number of times and take practice exams. And when they take the practice exam through a program we use called SkyPrep, uh, they were able to take that simulated FAA exam and um, then they um, get noticed when their exam is over, what questions that they got right, what questions they got wrong. The ones that they got wrong, the correct answer, of course, is there in the explanations. Workbooks are basically the same way. The workbooks are uh, one for general airframe and for power plant. Uh, they're also arranged by topic. Each workbook chapter has uh, three sections within it. So there's a, a long answer question, a short answer question, and a final exam question. So these are very, very popular. Um, among schools, uh, and we'd be glad to share that with you and um, in, in, in either print or ebook format if anybody wants to see it. Uh, all of our curriculum is available in both print and in ebook format, uh, and I'll get into the ebook format a little bit later also. Um, one of the things I'm asked about very often is we've been speaking for um, many years, basically since the 8083 handbooks came out. Uh, we talk about our, our versions are what we call a corrected version. And um, corrected does not mean that we've made any changes in the content or the text at, in the books whatsoever. The, in 8083-30A is the general handbook and it's the exact, you know, in page by page, it's the same as what you're gonna see from the actual FAA document. In the screen that I have next to me, there's a very good example of the type of corrections that's done. Uh, MS fittings are green, not blue. And if you look at the handbook on page 913, um, same in the general, in the FAA version, as the same as in our version, uh, you'll see there's a difference. And what we find and what we're told is, well, for one thing, we want our textbooks to be as accurate as possible. And for another thing, we don't want we want to avoid an instructor's 
embarrassment, basically, where they look at an FAA book and they the book is telling the student one thing and the instructor in this presentation is telling the student another thing and then the student asks what exactly, uh, you know, which of these two things is correct and it's a difficult situation for an instructor. Um, so we, we in, endeavor to correct that as much as possible. Uh, every one of the handbooks has a revision log in the front which shows specifically what has changed uh, on what particular page. So there's everything is, is referenced and if you wanted to go back to the old version uh, the ability to do so is, is also there. Um, in addition to the FAA um, curriculum, uh, we also do a, a YASA Part 66 curriculum. Uh, we are YASA approvals books, or YASA curriculum textbooks are currently approved by over 30 CAAs around the world, uh, in Europe, in Asia, in Australia, uh, and elsewhere. Uh, we also support the EASA curriculum with EASA test questions. Very, one of the major differences between uh, an EASA curriculum and an FAA curriculum and the approval for a school is with an FAA curriculum, of course, FAA writes the test questions. With an EASA curriculum, the school itself, as part of its approval process, part of its MTOE, is also tasked to write their own test questions based upon the textbooks or the handbooks or as it's called in uh, EASA world, uh, notes. Uh, and then uh, those questions are written and then those particular set of test questions are approved by their CA in the approval. Well, besides the textbooks and the modules that we offer, and so I can put up on the screen, here are some of the EASA modules. Um, and uh, we, we offer the books and we offer the matching test questions so the schools don't have to do this enormous job by themselves. Uh, the, in in uh, the EASA Part 66, we offer uh, the B11 set, the B2 avionics set, and we also offer what's called a category A set. Um, B2 is the global standard for avionics training, uh, which is the basically the governmental approved avionics curriculum that's recognized um, throughout the world. Um, pretty much every country in the world, with only a few exceptions, us of course being the largest one, have adopted EASA Part 66 as their model, and some uh, of those are actually aligned with EASA, and some of those, like for example, uh, in uh, Australia uh, and in some of the Gulf countries, the EASA curriculum is mirrored from the rules from uh, EASA, uh, but the credentials actually go to that particular government, to CASA or to DGCA, or uh, in the case of, of the uh, Gulf countries. Uh, let me get rid of here. Um, next thing that we can talk about quickly is a lot of peripheral um, um, products which we produce. Um, two of the most popular ones is, which I think a lot of you may be familiar with, are what we call professional pursuit flashcards. And this is basically the, the, the box of, of, of how the flashcards are, are presented. You can see there's 400 cards within the box. Um, it's designed, of course, from the very popular Trivial Pursuit game. Um, the four categories are general, airframe, power plant, and avionics. And we see students having a lot of fun with these. We've I've walked into schools, into the school's break room during lunchtime, and I'm seeing students standing on one side of the room and the other, and they're basically shouting questions to each other. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's also great practice for the oral exam because it gets students thinking about how to present <clears throat> an answer besides just the memorization from um from that you get from a multiple choice question <clears throat> i'm sorry another very popular additional item which we produce uh is an amt logbook um we had recently within the last month i say if not if even that much we've um, significantly changed the format of the pages and the reason why we did that is because we want the logbook not to comply just for what a student may want to keep for their own records or bring to an interview when they're looking for a, a job here uh, but we also want the logbook to comply with EASA standards um and uh, we'll talk about this also in a little bit but if a uh if an a p wishes to add an EASA B1 or B2 or even a CAD A license to their resume, uh, one of the aspects that they have to do is they have to prove their experience to, uh, to an EASA-based CAA. 
And the or way that that is done is, th is traditionally is through a logbook. And uh, most of the CAAs are pretty specific with how they want that logbook to look, what the categories are, uh, what they want the various entries to be, and so forth and so on. So the new logbook, which we've produced, uh, besides being useful for here and for a, a, a basically a job interview, a first interview or whatever, is, is also going to be um, acceptable towards an IASA um, situation. Um, another item which we produce, which is quite popular, I don't have a picture of it here, but um, I can show you that here, is uh, we produce uh, a human factors book. And human factors is, very, is, is taken quite seriously uh, in EASA. This is actually uh, almost a 200 page book and beyond the human factor elements that's covered in, uh, in general in chapter 14. Um, there's uh, physiology, there's workplace communications, um, there's uh, various uh, accident prevention programs. Um, and um, it, it's for a school which wants to teach human factors as a subject beyond what's required by FAA. Uh, even though this is written as an EASA module, um, obviously it's uh, perfectly valid in, in any situation. Um, get rid of this screen. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, and, and just while I have it in my hand here, uh, the B2 Avianis curriculum is a set of 12 modules um, ranging muchly from what is taught in A&P general through some um, much more advanced avionic type techniques that is um, you know, relevant for B2. This is module 13, which is the core avionics module for EASA. And as you can see, it's a pretty thick book. It's very extensive. One of the EASAs, Criteria um, for B2 avionics is they feel they don't want the student to learn only the electronics and the avionics and the instrumentation in the airplane and the auto flight systems in an airplane and so forth, but they want the student to also learn much of what's involved in B1 or in an A&P program. Um, for example, if a landing gear system is uh, controlled by computers and avionics and by various electronics. It's not enough just to learn the avionics section of, of that, but they also want the students to learn the structure of the landing gear. So one of the reasons why this book is this thick is because there's a chapter on landing gear, there's a chapter on hydraulic systems, pneumatic systems, and, and so forth. Um, the B1 version of this, B1 by the way, is yes, is equivalent to A&P. Um, you know, the, the B1 version beyond what's taught in A&P also gets into some of the information systems in an aircraft, um, some of the various communication systems, the various cabin systems, and, and so forth. And it's, it's somewhat more extensive than what's taught in airframe, um, but it's very relevant to that which people are going to actually be doing in their, in their jobs. Um, let me go to the next screen. Um, We are in the midst of um, changing our ebook format. We are um, replacing the Adobe Digital Editions system, which uh, is common um, for most people who use and sell and operate and look at ebooks with the new system. Um, the new system is, uh, as you see, it's on the screen presentation. It allows downloads to be easier, it allows them to be faster, it allows the reader to be able to transition between various devices um, a little bit easier. For example, a student, um, we with every ebook, we give the student the ability to use that ebook on up to six devices. And if a student wants to use it on a laptop and then on their iPad and then even on their telephone, uh, this new system is going to make it much more easy for the student to be able to transfer and to use that ebook throughout the various devices. It's a more stable platform. Um, it's, it's got some additional benefits for us, um, for the particular student. <clears throat> um, it's very much it's a, a PDF type format. All of the features and functions and looks and appearance on the ebook will be very, very similar to what you're used to with the Adobe functions. Um, however, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work a lot better. Um, we are currently offering this new system, um, which is based on, uh, on a British company's technology. We're currently offering 
this new system on uh, on special request we expect it to become the default system and uh, if, if not well by by the end of this month by october 1st is our target date where we'll basically switch the systems and everyone who orders an ebook in one way or another will be moved over to um to the to the new system um anybody who's currently using an adobe ebook right now um, particularly instructors, but students also uh, who would like at that time after October 1st to transfer to the new system, we'll provide that new format to that school uh, and to that instructor um, for free. You know, we, we think you're going to like it much. Lee. We know, you know, we like it a lot better. Uh, Adobe has served us for years and years and years, but it's cumbersome. It's problematic in some areas and it causes too many problems. So we're, we're very happy to switch over to that um next topic <clears throat> actually um kelly do you want to talk a little bit about red shelf and cortex um actually yeah i would like to kind of talk a little bit more about the ebook formats and include our other platforms that we offer as well um chiming in on what andy was saying uh, with our new ebook platforms that we're going to be using for our ebooks that we offer on our regular site, um, not only for retail customers, but for schools as well. Um, the new system that we're going to be offering is um, not a program that needs to be downloaded. This is going to be just a viewer um, to make it easier for all students to use on all uh, devices that are available to them iPads, Macs, Windows, uh, any viewer that they have. Um, also, with that being said, we have other uh, options that, like he has on the screen, um, that we can offer our ebooks through your uh, Follett bookstores, for example. eFollett um, uses Red Shelf. We have our books on there, our core products like our handbooks, workbooks, test guides, all of our YAS modules are available um, to students through that uh, platform. Uh, Cortex can be used through the LMS systems as well that can be used um, or can be available directly through us to your school. Um, we do, uh, we use Vital Source um, as a platform. There's so many different availabilities for our ebooks um, material for your schools to use. Um, please let us know if that's something that you're interested in. There's various different availabilities um, as far as um, purchasing directly through us, through use through your uh, bookstores, um, to coupons that can be redeemed at a later date through your students um, when they get a chance. Uh, just let us know if there's something that is um, specific to your needs and your students' needs that we can customize for you. Um, but all of these resources are available. Um, we try to make distance learning um, more available now that it is more than ever. Um, so all of our core products are available as eBooks. Um, we try to bundle so you can have print copies and the eBooks, everything's page for page, available as much as possible um, to make, like I said, the distance learning, um, school and home, just more available and easier for all. One, well, one of the benefits of running Cortex through your LMS system is because, of the, because you're running through Canvas or Moodle or Blackboard or, or most of the other major ones, um, for schools that are doing um, distance learning, it enables you to track, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it enables you to track the um, student's time within the platform, uh, which I know is important um, for some of the, your, uh, your approvals to be able to do distance learning. Um, next topic to brief on is uh, we've been running for many years a system called um, direct to student or, or we just call it DTS. Basically, what DTS is is, an on, is a private online bookstore for your students. You will have a unique web address uh, that the students can enter. Um, for example, uh, it'll, it'll be actechbooks.com slash UAF for Alaska Fairbanks, uh, ERAU for Emory Riddle, um, so forth and so on. There's about a, a, a 
a little more than a dozen schools that are currently using the DTS programs. It allows a student, uh, especially in a student in a school where there is not a convenient on-campus bookstore, it allows a student to go online and to order your specific customized kit, whatever that kit happens to be, with a single click. We know the students are getting the books that you want, uh, as you see in the screen on the left. Uh, this is one school's general kit, one school's uh, airframe kit, their power plant kit. Um, if this kit can include basically whatever it needs to include um, for, from us and for other publishers. The schools get the students get to choose it in print or when available, uh, get to choose it on ebook. Uh, we know that the students are getting the correct editions. We know the students are going to get them fast. The prices are discounted. There is no shipping costs. The, we give that for free when students buy their full kits uh, most of the time. Uh, there's no sales tax unless they're in Colorado. Uh, and it's a very easy, it's a very convenient way for you to be sure that your students are getting the correct editions of the correct books on time, directly shipped to their homes. Uh, or once in a while, we even have the kits shipped to a campus and the students can pick it up from the campus. Uh, but that's your choice. There, there's no charge for us to develop a DTS program for your school. Uh, basically, all you need to do is tell us what your kit is and uh, we'll create the site for you in two or three days. Uh, we'll send you some brochures, some handouts that you can let the students know um, exactly how to access the site uh, and, and how to use it. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it, it's the program works well. I understand some, cool, some schools can't use it because there's contractual obligations with your campus bookstore. Uh, but for schools that you know, that want to use it and can use it, it's an additional option that that we can offer. Um, that that helps for everybody. Um, by the way, the look of the website, which you see here, and which you see here, um, is also changing. On October first, it's going to drastically change. The entire web platform is becoming completely modernized. Um, you know, look more like what you see a current website to look like. So we're that happens at the same time as the uh, ebook uh, revisions uh, become formalized um, within the next week or so. Um, last thing um, I'll cover for you here is, uh, as we've mentioned before, uh, we've been very much involved with uh, with IASA. Uh, we produce a full IASA curriculum for CAT A, for B11, for B2. Uh, we can talk about um, every aspect of that that you can think of. Uh, in addition to this, to support this, uh, we've entered a partnership recently with the Part 147 in Bern, Switzerland, which is approved by FOCA, which is the Swiss uh, CAA. Uh, the school's name is Quality Control Management, or QCM. And um, this partnership allows us to do two things with you, uh, which we'll call Phase 1 and Phase 2. Uh, and phase one is examinations for experienced a and P's. If an a and P has five years worth of experience, related experience on the particular EASA license that they're looking for, B11 is more or less equivalent to a and P, then basically that in order for that mechanic to add a B1 level, a B1 to their resume, they need to do two things. One, they need to pass the written exams, and two, they need to prove their experience to the um, CAA of their choice um, in, uh, in, in an EASA country. Uh, we recommend the French or the Swiss um, for this. And, um, and they do those two things and, and basically they get their license. The, um, the phase one basically allows a school here. If you have a secure examination room here within your campus, then we can extend the approvals of QCM to your school to allow your school to be able to um, become an EASA examination center within your state, within your region. Uh, basically, we like to call it within your market area. This gives you the opportunity to earn revenue um, by giving exams. It gives you the opportunity to conduct your own uh, with our help, if you like. Uh, refresher courses, um, most a &Ps, no matter how much they have been working on a particular system, probably aren't going to remember their electrical formulas and they're going to want to come to you and to take some type of refresher courses uh, or some courses on some of the exam topics that are 
not covered um, within the FAA curriculum or what they're used to, so we can help with that as well. Um, the second phase is um, beyond testing of experienced beyond testing of experienced uh, ANPs is uh, uh, QCM's complete approval to teach CAD A, B1, or B2 can be extended to your school. Uh, basically, you're operating under QCM's approval. This will allow you to recruit new students um, to take any ASA program. This can be run as a standalone B1 or B2 program or CAD A program, which is fully approved um, through QCM through the um, Swiss CAA. Uh, it allows you to enhance your international recruitment um, from students that uh, are or at or uh, expect to work for or uh, within a country which is uh, EASA based. Uh, it also gives the opportunity to run a dual program. Um, we, we've worked with school in the past that has actually developed a program where you can teach EASA and A&P at the same time. It's a very long program. Uh, because the EASA program by itself is a 2,400-hour program, and then to that you that's to that you need to add EASA regulations, you need to add additional human factors. Oh, I'm sorry, and, and on the FAA side, you need to add FAA regulations, you need to add piston engines, you need to add helicopters. Um, about 90% of the EASA B1 curriculum uh, conforms to the A&P curriculum. Um, sometimes EASA is at a higher learning level than than the program. Uh, but it's very possible because a rivet is a rivet, an electron is an electron, to be able to do a program which, uh, in, where the student walks in on day one and they walk out um, uh, about 2,900 hours later and they have both credentials in their pocket. Uh, that's phase two. Uh, I, I realize these topics, especially the YASA topics, are, are quite complicated. I can sit here for a much, much longer time than Crystal is going to let me. <laughs> to talk about all the details, um, but uh, I would absolutely want to invite anybody who's interested in talking about having your campus become a regional EASA testing center or going further than that to be able to accept and train and approve EASA students. Uh, we would invite you to either ask a question now uh, or call us uh, or we can set up a, uh, a Zoom meeting uh, between us uh, and yourselves and we can bring in the QCM people when we get to that point and we can see how this can basically work for your school. Um, thank you for your time with, today. What, sorry? I was thanking everyone for their time today. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's 10 o'clock. Um, thank you again, everybody. <laughs> uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, at the next ATEC meeting or, or around. And um, if the next ATEC meeting happens to be uh, in Denver in 2022, we certainly want to invite you to come and spend an extra couple of days and visit us in. Winter Park, and uh, we will actually show you around this place if you want, but we'll talk about that more as we get close. So yeah, thank you, everybody, and we'll hope to speak to you in the future. You'll still have snow in March, right? I mean, we used to oh, go yeah. to Winter Park in March. You know, yeah. it, would be, it would be nice because if we could schedule for 2022, if it's going to be in Denver a few weeks earlier, uh, getting into April, most of the ski resorts, Winter Park will be open until late April, but the conditions in late March and early April are a lot nicer. Yeah, okay, well, we'll see what we can do about that. Andy? Thank you, Crystal. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Andy.